Buddy Beautiful has been running roughshod through the primetime wrestling locker room. The last month he struck a nerve when we brought bullying back. And making a mockery of the fans. Body Beautiful has promised tonight the Knights of Columbus Hall will be the stage for Billy Blaine and Mitch Paradise's most beautiful of masterpieces. Abomination of what? a national anthem what in attempt. The world? There you see it. Richfield's favorite son has come to the rescue. The only thing I see right now is a man who is filled with envy. He is so green. He is as green as a space Martian with envy, his magic man. My word. There you see the magic man slamming the cranium of Blaze down on the announcer's table. And these fans, I can't believe it. We're getting right into things here. I am speechless at the actions of not only these people, these troglodytes in the crowd. Oh, give me a break. Not allowing Biz Billy Blaze to express himself. And it looks like we're going Shouting to actually him. have an impromptu matchup here now. Shouting him down while he try. And now when he's down? And look at, oh, and look at that. Well played by Billy Blaze, the ring general. Nicely done. I gotta say it. I hadn't had a chance to say it right off the bat. Welcome everyone to Primetime Wrestling. Indeed, indeed. I am Donnie Colfax and I am always joined by you. Yes, uh, or I joined by you, I guess, depending on the perspective. I am Mark Mantel. Welcome to the festivities tonight here, folks. And we are underway, as I said before. This is the magic man, Billy Blaze. And look at these kicks done by Blaze now to perfection. Right on point. This feud between these two men has been building. And look at that, how Blaze snapped over the magic man. And now he's going for a cover of sorts. Not, count not good enough. It is a little too early. And I can't still believe how we uh, started off tonight, Donnie. From the jump, we were not expecting Billy Blaze this early, but he came out to inspire these people from the jump. And unfortunately, they did not want to hear it, but... Magic Man definitely well, helped. He heard and felt that drop kick. That was on point right into the sternum. I don't think they were inspired so much as they were angered at the complete lack of respect shown to this country by Billy Blaze, who obviously only believes in and cares about himself. No, Billy Blaze only cares about those that respect him. 
Something that Magic Man has not done for a long time because the student forgot. And look at that. Who the master is, and that is Billy Blaze, one half of Body Beautiful. And no matter which way you look at it, whether you like him or dislike him, you cannot argue with the in-ring prowess of Billy Blaze. Absolutely not. He had he one, was under two. The no. He stuttered, he studied under the tutelage of the great Malenko himself as Billy Blaze, and then he took it upon himself to take the Magic Man under his Ooh, wing. Look at that European uppercut. And how does how does the Magic Man pay back Billy Blaze? That's right, he stabs him in the back. And look at Blaze talking to the crowd as he applies this side headlock now. A bit of an aloof headlock, if you ask me. It doesn't look like he uh, is taking this matchup too seriously. I think he's a little flabbergasted and aghast at himself. He's just, he's, look at those elbows. He doesn't know where to go from here because he was he was doing something that wasn't about competition. It was about expression. And what does Magic Man do? Oh, and look it. He jumps him like he would in an alleyway. Two. Goes for the cover. Come not, on, not enough. Come on, and let's take Magic Man out here. And look at the power. Gut wrench suplex into a slam. Come one, on, one, two. two. No. The Magic Man still has the ability and the ring presence of mind and the energy needed to kick out of these successive pinfall attempts by Blaze. When, exactly, when you speak of ring presence, you better not be speaking of Magic Man because all he has is some tricks. The tricks that are known by the one known as Billy Blaze, one half of Body Beautiful. Inside Cradle, oh he rolls right through it Look though. at it, right on point. For example, I don't even have to say anything. You saw one, it there. Two. Two oh, count. And he didn't even get a two count, actually. It was just about to. Blaze. Always aware in that ring is Blaze. Indeed he is. Blaze now in firm control of the Magic Man. And he has him against the ropes. He will break before the five count, as the rules would dictate. Irish whip leap, leaps over. He's got and another Beautiful drop kick here in this match, this time by Magic Man. That was also on point. As you can see, I guess in some ways, the Magic Man does have a good deal of wrestling training under his belt. Well, he was trained by Billy Blaze himself. He was, and so you see the lineage of these two men. They go, they go way, way back in this industry. Boot to the face by Blaze. The Magic Man was not expecting that. And what's Blaze gonna do here? He's gonna charge into the corner, but the Magic no, Man no. got out of the way. One, two, three, he got him. The Magic Man, he got Billy Blaze. How? In a very surprising roll of finish. How? How did the referee allow this? How I did don't he allow think... this to happen? First, Magic Man jumps him. He, look at the look and in look, his eyes. And look, he is surprised, just as all of us here in the primetime wrestling no. Knights of Columbus Hall are. And look, Billy Blaze is living. He is not nearly in the same demeanor as he was when he came out here, Donnie Colfax. Absolutely not. And how could you, if your former student, someone you considered a friend, once again stuck the knife in your back and decided this time to twist it? How would you feel, Mark? Well, it is possible that, that Billy Ridiculous. Blaze, he wouldn't have even been interrupted had he not shown such Look at disrespect. That little Billy Blaze now jawjacking with the fans here, and they are letting their feelings be heard about Blaze. Nonetheless, Richfield's favorite son has picked up the victory in this one-on-one -on -one impromptu read between contest. between the lines, Magic. If you can read, that was not okay. That was a two-count. The bell didn't sound, and that referee was paid off.
Welcome back, fans, to Primetime Wrestling. Laszlo's in the ring and Mitch Paradise, the other half of Body Beautiful, along with his tag team partner, Billy Blaze, is on his way to the ring. And after the defeat of Blaze in that first impromptu match, a surprising defeat. Yes, yeah, Paradise does not look too pleased, and he looks like he needs business. This is Billy Blaze, everybody. And he has every right to be in for what we saw. PWA is intentionally, intentionally, intentionally trying to bury body beautiful. Billy Blaze, my best friend in the whole world, was just supposed to be out here to give the anthem, not to wrestle. I was in the back getting ready, wasn't here to make sure everything was fair for Billy Blaze. Fair? Billy Blaze wants no part of fair, as long as it's in his favor. Blasphemy. Just, just a curious question. Do you people of this part of Minnesota have something against showering and his rant sitting here? I'm on the mic, you shut your mouth. Oh, wants to get a point across. If that doesn't happen, I can just stay in the ring all night and talk to you people. I wouldn't object to that one bit. Not at all. What are the moon to kick someone's butt tonight? What? Anybody you want, throw them at me. Get them in this ring. Challenge laid down by Mitch Paradise. It seems that he has issued an open challenge, as it were, to the locker room. We will see if anyone back there has the cojones to challenge Paradise right after this. Voltage Radio. Bloomington's number one radio show is now also a podcast. Every week, Brian Johnson and Brian Schroeder interview exciting guests like Dive Kick World Champion Ben Chandler, Giovanni Peluso from Corolla Digital, and iGamerresponsibly.com's editor in chief, Dylan Zelmer. For all the video game and wrestling news and nonsensical nonsense, join the Brothers of Bloomington on High Voltage Radio Fridays at 11 10 Central. Available on iTunes. Welcome back, fans, to Primetime Wrestling, and we are awaiting to see if anyone's going to answer the challenge Come set on. down by... Oh. Yes, it looks like someone is. It's the Olympian hero, Chaz Betts. Come on, I mean, I have to be grudgingly admit it so that the reason Primetime Wrestling is America's premier independent wrestling federation is this man, Chaz Betts, as I like to call him, the Olympic failure. Oh, and for some on. reason, eyes in New York, eyes from Nashville, from across the world, have them set right on that of Chaz Betts, the boy from London. And Chaz Betts will have his work cut out for him here against the veteran, Mitch Paradise. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to let you know that Primetime Wrestling is brought to you by Budweiser, who reminds you responsibility matters. And Freeway Ford of Bloomington, your way at Freeway. Visit freewayford.net. And Fat Lorenzo's Pizza, Pasta, Hoagies, Italian in a big way. 
Ladies and gentlemen, sorry to cut you off there, but this is going to be exciting. That's all I had to say. Indeed it is, and I was going to say, speaking of a big way, that's something that I'm, I'm leaning to think Chaz Betts has in for himself because he's going up against the likes of Mitch Paradise, one yes. half of Body Beautiful. And visually so, it's almost a David and Goliath type of atmosphere here. Given the height and size advantage, as you see Paradise... But unlike Goliath, the brains lie in that of the giant in this story, and that is Mitch Paradise. There you see Paradise trying to start with the mind games early, it, which is exactly what you say. He, he has a cerebral way about him when he enters that squared circle. He is definitely a protege and a friend of Billy Blaze. They have studied the world together, and together... They form Body Beautiful, the most dominant tag team here in primetime wrestling, bar none. And Chaz Betts, the Olympian hero, as we said, has a huge arsenal of moves at his disposal. And Paradise is a seasoned veteran, too. I can't wait to see how this one turns out. There you see the power by Paradise. Power and the strength is one thing. He also has that height advantage, but that is not everything in the sport of professional wrestling. Here in the squared circle, the most important thing What? It, oh, come on! Paradise claiming now that his hair was pulled by Betts. I don't think an Olympic hero needs to resort to such tactics. I don't like to think that a referee is asking these fans if what they saw... Come on, ref, do your job! Let's get down to business here. You can see the grit and determination by Betts. He just wants to get underway with this one. And Paradise not letting it happen as of yet. Although Paradise now has him backed up into the corner, utilizing that strength. And look at that forearm club. And a fist right to the jaw of Betts. That'll rock you good. And I'm not so sure that Betts isn't sure where he is at this moment. And look at that, the sheer impact of Betts slamming into that turnbuckle, sent him down, and Paradise wasn't able to complete the clothesline. Indeed, it was. I don't I'm think he ducked. That. I don't think he meant to duck out of the way as much as I would have liked to have seen that. No, indeed, indeed. See, there's some of that impartiality. There you go, Mark. You are growing as a performer and artist. I do my best. And look at Paradise now with a little jig, a little shimmy in the middle of the ring. His artistry is magnificent. Deal with it, Mark. And so are those boots right to Chaz Betts. Right, and the intimidation now by Paradise is being utilized as Betts is recovering slowly in the corner, although I think the wind's been knocked out of him. Betts has not been the same since once, right from that point where Mitt Paradise rocked him in the jaw with that fist. I'm pretty sure that right now Chaz Betts is seeing double. And Paradise tried to Irish whip him once, is successful the second time around, goes right back to work on that bread basket, driving the shoulder, the immensely sized shoulder, I might add, right into the midsection. How is Betts going to come back from something like this, Donnie? As I said earlier in this matchup, and I say time in and time out, by doing anything, by any means, in this squared circle. And he just leveled him with a right hand. One, two. Paradise going for the cover, thinking the right hand might have done enough, but Betts still surprising everyone with his ring presence. Beautifully applied leverage by Mitch Paradise, I must add, though, even though Chaz Betts was able and had the fortitude to kick out Paradise picks him up for a slam, it would appear. Is he gonna run? He was gonna run for him, but Betts backed away, and that arm drag was nothing short of magnificent. And a drop toho has Paradise down as Betts now there you is go, in kid. control. There you go. This is what he needs to do. He needs to take the vertical advantage away from Mitch Paradise as quickly as possible because that is where... He's back to his feet now. Chaz Betts is gonna be able to shine on that mat. Just as you were talking about the vertical base, it was no sooner than Mitch Paradise was right back to his feet, but now he's down now. And he has that cinched in. He is not at all letting up on Paradise. You can see it from this angle. Two count. Cover there. I don't even know if Betts was sure that he was covering him or not. I think he's more. And this is a change here. Look at that head scissors by Paradise. Poetry in motion. Very fluidly and smoothly done by Paradise. I got to hand it to him. And it's amazing that he is 
He's able to do oh, this. Oh, what's this now? <laughs> oh, I've not seen that before. You say it? Well, I guess it is a good thing it worked there. It so was I guess effective. I have to yeah. swallow my words. You thought I, he was uh, just doing something foolish, but there was actually an end game there. I saw it come to fruition pretty quickly, so I'll give it to the kid. He maintains that headlock cinched in tightly. You can see the grimace on the face of Paradise there. More so, I have to give it to Paradise. What right. a low blow. Did you see that, Tony? No, what I saw is a man who is struggling to keep it together. He's smiling right now, but right... Yeah, because he's proud of himself for punching him right in the, right he in the lower the part. He has ring advantage, but he's held it together after seeing his friend, his best friend in the world, Billy Blaze, get jumped by that hooligan, the yeah. magic man. Indeed, Paradise. What does that say about the city of Richfield? Oh, that, come on. Really? How They're, do those folks feel? I think they feel just fine. They're proud to have a punk and represent punk. them. And Paradise Not someone now. like... Mitch Paradise uh, is Might I suggest that you keep your head in the action here at the ring and stop talking about the patrons and the, the residents of Richfield. I was getting to my point. How Mitch Paradise is able to keep it together after seeing all that and still oh, own no. the ring with this Olympic hero to some. Incredible knife edge chopped to the chest. Did you hear that, Donnie? I did. I heard it all the way up here. And I saw the look in the face of Chaz Betts. That boy has a fire in his eye right now. He does, and you see it there with the clothesline. Paradise, at least momentarily, is reeling. And a slap to the chest. Not quite a knife edge, but a slap nonetheless. He's going to turn that chest beat red. And a boot stops it. Loves him down. And there's that height advantage. I'm not sure that Betts could have done the same for Look at over him. in club. Look at him. I am so proud of Mitch that he's able to smile and take this victory as it's coming along. Even though his best friend is in the back licking his wounds at the hands of the magic man. Mitch is in this matchup with the Olympic hero and he is dominating. I must say he is old, holding his own as far as technique goes. Something that you might not expect from anyone other than a, an Olympic wrestler, but Paradise, I got to admit, as much as I wouldn't like to, he is surprising me with his prowess. He is surprising me even more so because I am pretty sure that after the brutal attack on Billy Blaze and a knee lift. A knee lift sends him tumbling. The force with which that knee hit that stomach. He's, he is so much taller than Chaz Betts. The lift literally just threw him in the air, and now he's got him back up. Back up in the fireman's carry position. What's he going to do with him here? Drop him to the mat. This will be the end of him. Indeed, he did just that, except not to the mat, right to that point of that knee. One, two, two three. No. Betts somehow still able to know when that three count was going to happen, able to kick out. Speaking of somehow, some way, Mitch Paradise has held it together, ex especially because I know, I know in my heart that Billy Blaze was trying to take care of himself because they got to be a group united, and he probably was not available because he was receiving medical attention to give those words of encouragement they love to give to each other before their matchups. So, so Billy Blaze wasn't there for Mitch, and now Mitch is going out there a bit nude or naked, if you will, without the words of encouragement from his best friend, and he's still pulling it off. Indeed, I'm sure that, that Paradise wants to salvage the duo's night, as Billy Blaze did lose that first matchup. Not sure what he'll do. Oh, look at this! T-Bone suplex! Incredible by the young Chaz Betts, the Olympian. A textbook. T-Bone suplex, and I was just going to say, if Paradise doesn't win this match, I don't know what Body Beautiful is going to do. The injustice of before and then this, I don't I don't know if they're going to make it through. And Chaz Betts trying to feed off the electricity of this capacity crowd now. He's got something in mind, and that's to stick that boot up there. And Paradise doesn't know where he is. Bet is good. Betts is going to do something, something big. He's got him in. Paradise is on the ropes. An elbow to the head. And a, no, he ducks that one. Northern Light Suplex. Beautiful R2. Shoulder up by Paradise. He's holding it together. Come on, Mitch. Amazingly so. After first the T-Bone, then the Northern Light Suplex. Paradise still able to kick out. This has been a seesaw battle back and forth. And this is back incredible. Back in favor of Mitch Paradise. First to his feet. He's going to do it. Oh no, what's going to happen here? Power bomb! Just drops him. Three! He went for it. Betts able to kick out of the mighty power bomb. Set in place. Here you see it again. You see the leverage, and still, somehow, Chaz Betts kicks out. He does amazingly so, and Paradise can't believe it. He is living. He might strike that referee. 
No, no, no not this way. One, one, two, two three. No. I thought Betts was going to pull. Any way but that. Come on. And Paradise. There you go. Come on. Another Bet. power bomb. This, he's done. Two in a row. No man can survive that. All the training in the world Bet's, cannot save you Bet's from this Betts is a goner. Fate. He's an absolute goner. No. He backs out. He slips out. German suplex. That one, arc again. Two, three. Yes. One. Chaz Betts has pulled a rabbit out of his hat and has won with a German suplex. You said it exactly. It's another magic trick. He is getting cahoots with Magic Man. Something's oh, going on. on here. Give me the a break. Look is. at this. First, the T-bone suplex, expertly applied. Then, the Northern Lights, also expertly applied. And to finish it off, a German suplex to wrap up Body Beautiful's night. And more specifically, Mitch Paradise. So be it. The Olympic Zero has a couple of pretty suplexes. And Mitch Paradise. But he doesn't have the fortitude, the ring expertise of Mitch Paradise. This, Chaz this Betts, isn't possible. This is exactly one of the, re the reason why Chaz Betts is so popular. This is incredible action. The only kind that you can find is at PTW. We will be right back. Second thought, I want to talk to you. People ask me, why do you do what you do? Billy Blaze, why do you go out there? Why do you make these statements? Why do you turn the national anthem on its feet and bastardize it? I didn't, okay? There's always a message. There's always a kernel of truth. Why I do what I do, I'm tired of the, ema the emasculation of the American male, okay? The manergy is gone. There's no dads anymore. There's just single moms. Getting out as many kids as they want. Well, you know what? The subsidized baby farming that's been going on is over with. Okay, it's time to start taking care of some of the dads, some of that. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not just doing it for God, I'm doing it for the kids. Okay, I'm letting them know. You, there's a line for you, okay? You're gonna listen to your parents. You're gonna to listen to Billy Blaze. And it may, it may not always come out the way you want it to come out or the way it should come out or the PC way, but it is the way, okay? You will get your spanking. You will not talk. When, you will keep your you know, ears open, your mouth closed, and listen to what I'm saying. But people don't get the messages. They don't get it. It's like I went out, I sang, you know why I sang the national anthem today? I didn't sing the national anthem. I sang the Billy Blaze anthem, okay? That's what I said. A lot of people are upset at me, a lot of bets. Thank you for your service. But what I did today is I wanted to show why the, Ameri the national anthem used to be a time. I, I wanted to show how the national anthem has been co-opted by celebrity entertainers trying to show how great they are. You know what? I'm done. I went out and I did it. 
I had a good time. Those people got up on their feet. They were a little mad, but they didn't get the message. The message is it's all about the people singing together. But they didn't get it. So they all turned on me. Well, I don't care. I'm doing it the Billy Blaze way. You people will not probably get it. If one person gets it, that's all I care about. One person. That one person is Billy Blaze. Thank you. And you know what? I got another thing to say. A lot, there's a lot of weak kids out there. And the reason why, they sit, they play their video games, they don't get out there. They don't wrestle like I did when I was growing up. And if somebody's picking on them, what do they do? They run to mama. Run home to mama. Or they snitch to the teachers. Well, you know what? I, did, I got picked on a lot when I was a kid. But I didn't do that. I went to the gym, I trained, I built this body, check that out, okay? Yeah. That arm's mad at the rest of my body because it could have gone pro. Let me tell you, I trained, I went out, when people give me a hard time, I take care of it myself. I don't go to the cops, I don't go to the teachers, I don't complain to anybody. I just take, take care of business, TCB, like Elvis said. I don't know, let me tell you. I haven't given up hope for the American people. I love this country, I just don't like the people. And who can blame him after the display earlier? I'm just glad to see he's all right. Well, regardless of how you feel about Billy Blaze or the way he feels, we are set for our main event here, folks. Making his way to the ring right now, John Johnson from Boston, the misfit John Johnson. And he is getting ready for what some have described as the most brutal encounter that you can have in professional wrestling, a strap match. It's definitely amongst them. It is the brutality of being tied to your opponent. There really is no escape because those straps tie you two together until one of you is able to touch all four corners in succession, each turnbuckle, one, two, three, and four. And let us not forget that that strap that both men are attached to is used free-handedly as you want as any kind of a weapon. You can, you can do anything with that strap, and that is why this is dangerous. It is the kind of match that not only shortens careers, it is the kind of match that can shorten a man's life. Indeed, no pinfalls, no submissions, no count outs. The only way to win is to touch those four turnbuckles. It's definitely going to be a barbaric main event here at Primetime Wrestling in the Knights of Columbus Hall. And as always, if you want tickets, oh, and look at that. Johnson right in the midst of his usual ring entrance. For the live in your face action of Primetime Wrestling, visit pgwrestling.com. The utter disdain that Johnson shows to the fans is nothing short of, of, of breathtaking in a negative way, I think. Absolutely, but even more breathtaking is the fact that you can join in and show your disdain or love for any of the superstars here in primetime wrestling. Again, it's ptwrestling.com. Get your tickets today. Thank you for that, Donnie, and we are awaiting the arrival of John Johnson's opponent here in this strap match. And These there two men know each other all too well. The familiar music of the Black Stallion is coursing through the speakers here in this arena and coursing through the veins of every die-hard Black Stallion fan for going on 10 plus, 15 plus. I so long that some of these fans weren't even born when the Black Stallion was starting his career. I can remember being a youngster myself in that crowd watching Black Stallion start off his career. This man definitely has that it factor they always talk about. The Black Stallion is one of the most beloved independent wrestlers here in the Midwest. He has wrestled everybody. He has made a name for himself. If you're from Minnesota and you have not heard of the Black Stallion, you must be living under some kind of a rock. You know why that is? It's that it factor. It's his ability to politic in the back as oh, he does so on. well. Give like, me oh, a okay. break, Donnie. That has, that has nothing to do with why the fans love him or why he has been such a success. See it as you want, Mark. See it as you want. But what I know we are going to see right now is an animalistic match the likes Indeed. that we have not seen here in PTW. Indeed, and one thing I must say is that John Johnson seems a lot more confident at this point than the Black Stallion does. He's almost strutting around that ring like he hasn't a care in the world. In this car, we're at 265 pounds from Boston, Massachusetts. He is the misfit, John Johnson! This 
matchup is going to change the face of PTW forever. Well said. There's the Black Stallion. These fans here at the Knights of Columbus Hall absolutely love primetime wrestling and the Black Stallion. I can't say so much for John Johnson with the way he throws food and liquids at people. These people disrespect him. He only sends it right back at them. They deserve it. Treat others as you wish to be treated. That's how I was raised. And referee Rob Page is going to go over the rules. Let's realize that this is indeed a strap match. in this matchup that makes it unique. The momentum is broken. The count will go back to zero. Do you both understand? There is no easy way to win this matchup. Its uniqueness is, is you have to have your man down long enough to reach all four corners and have the accessibility yourself even though you're strapped to him. Yes, but you cannot beat him down so much that he's dead weight because then you won't be able to get to all four corners. Exactly, it is that delicate balance. You see the straps beginning to be put on. John Johnson first, all too eager is Johnson. Yes, he- uh, Confident is Johnson, and who he, could blame him? He has a propensity for pain, does John Johnson, the misfit. And the Black Stallion is awaiting his turn to be strapped to this, to this device, Look this at him deadly pacing. device. Look at him pacing back and forth, eyeing it. He looks a little nervous if you ask me. Indeed, he doesn't have the uh, arrogant smile that Johnson does, but I don't know if I'd call it nervous. Johnson calling him, he says, bring it. And these two men are going to in our main event matchup. First ever. First time here in primetime wrestling strap match. Indeed, this is a match that I was wondering if it was going to be sanctioned by PTW officials. Indeed, it eventually was, and that's why we're all allowed to see this. And I gotta say, there are several children at ringside. I just hope this doesn't give them long-term nightmares, Donnie Colfax. It may do just that. But the one thing that is for certain is that everyone in attendance here at the Knights of Columbus Hall is going to remember this matchup for the rest of their lives. They will. A violent altercation like this look, is look, not saying, something you forget. What is with the hesitation right now? Oh, he's just making just sure. It, look it up. He wants he to make sure again. that it's not going to, you know, cut off his circulation or anything to that effect. He wants to make sure that both men Come on, are on a level, even playing field. And there he's doing it. Yeah, get your even playing field. It's that politicking. He's always doing it. Rob Page will call this one right down the middle. That is for certain here. And by the way, you said it. it. You said it earlier. This is this is such an incredible. What? He barely has that strap around his wrist. Oh come on! He's John slipping it on, and he's already Johnson putting the boost to Johnson. Johnson was the first one with the strap. Close line. Yes, and the uh, early the early aggression shown by the Black Stallion is overcome immediately by Johnson as he goes to town with a succession of kicks to the back. That strap can also be used as a weapon. There is no disqualifications in this unique matchup. Indeed, and Johnson knows that just as does the Black Stallion. And I gotta wonder, with these men being the professionals they are, they must have done their homework in a match like this. They must both have several ideas for pain that they want to inflict. I know for a fact that John Johnson has been studying several strap matches from the past, formulating his plan, and perhaps that is why he got 
that smile on his face, he has the plan that's going to get him this victory. Knee to the midsection, takes down the Black Stallion. It's that kind and of look at this now. that will do it. Donnie, you see it there. Johnson is the first one to use that strap as a weapon. And they're choking nothing. out. There's nothing. nothing that the referee, or anyone else for that matter, can do about it. And the Black Stallion is screaming in pain early on here tonight. Truly a watershed moment here in prime time wrestling. The gloves coming off of it, if you will. Both men seem evenly matched up, although at the moment, it looks like Johnson has the leverage advantage. And he is not gonna let the Black Stallion breathe for a moment if he has anything to say about it. Johnson has wrestled the Stallion so many times in their careers, both of them illustrious. He knows exactly what he has to do. These two men know each other very well. There you see. Elbow, followed by a club to the back. We'll see if this allows the Stallion to gain any kind of momentum here against Johnson. Real simple, both of these men are freight trains. The only question is which one has more coal ready to stoke and put into the engine? And we're gonna find out here. He's reaching. Elbow takes down Stallion right as Stallion was going for that turnbuckle. Jaw Jack and the fans as their hero is where he belongs. Johnson has him in a precarious position to say the least here. Jumping Johnson at the get of this match right from the jump. He literally barely had it on his wrist and he was kicking, kicking John Johnson, barely allowing him to be prepared for this matchup. Part of the strategy being employed by the Black Stallion early on. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Look at that foot right to the, almost a, almost a nudge, like an arrogant nudge to the face. Disrespectful. A couple of fists now by the Stallion trying as best he can. But a rake to the eyes. Just as legal as a headlock here, Donnie. That's the beauty of it. I was just going to say, it is backbreaker. Beautiful to see it. These two men are going to pull out all the stops. And they're going to have to if they hope to win this matchup. It's not going to be easy. It sounds simple, folks. And one thing I've noticed about Johnson when he when he goes from one move to another, he had him up for that sidewalk slam, but then converted into a backbreaker. As the opponent of Johnson, how do you ever know what this man's gonna do next? John Johnson is the type of John Johnson, I have been several times out with him at night, enjoying his his friendship. We are good friends, I'll admit that. And we've been playing poker, and he's always one or two steps ahead of his opponents, and both Johnson. in the ring and at the poker table. Johnson taking this one outside, a dangerous place for the Stallion to be. Shoulder into the post. His arm was just curled around that ring post. His ability to modify and alter his moves midstream is what keeps his opponents guessing and keeps them in the air and allows him to keep the advantage he uses so well here in PTW. And he's, tie he's, he's wrapping that strap underneath the arm. He's gonna, he's gonna. He's gonna try to hang this man. What is he gonna try to do here? He's gonna try to cut off his circulation. He's doing what he needs to do by any means to keep the stallion down so we can get to all four turnbuckles. My goodness, I cannot believe the intensity already here by Johnson. He wants to win this one no badly. Back. None whatsoever. Kick to the back of the head. That's Excedrin headache number nine. Now he's just laying the boots. He is squeezing the air Indeed. out of the Black Stallion. The entire frame of Johnson coming down right on the back. It's, a, it's amazing that the Stallion can even breathe at this point. And <laughs> look at Johnson talking to Rasslin Rick there. Rasslin Rick taking notes. Getting a little bit of an exclusive from John Johnson about this matchup. And did you hear the club to the back? That slapping sound. Johnson is going to try to set him up, it looks like, for something here. It was less of a slap and more of a thud. It was quite It sickening. was a deadening thud, very sickening indeed. Oh. The slap of that strap, though, was even more leather, sickening. Leather on human flesh. That, he might be lacerated. Rob Page should get down there and make sure he is all right. And Johnson's going to try something, something even more drastic now. I cannot believe this. That malice intent in his eyes. But the Stallion, he reverses it and throws Johnson right into the chairs. My goodness, someone get down here and make sure he's all Rob right. Rob Page doing his job for once. Rob Page ah. checking on Johnson immediately. Johnson goes crashing. Here's a different angle. Look at that. You ah. saw his leg catch that chair at his lower back. He's got to be cut up from head to toe after that one. 
It was, I will have to, I'm on the side of Stallion in this one. He did not intentionally detach himself from that strap, so we are going to continue in this matchup. Thank you for noticing that, Rob Donnie. Page attaches it once again. This matchup will continue. In any other case, that would have been a DQ, but it was inadvertent. And you see Just Johnson the force, almost the force. Yes, the lifeless almost body of Johnson beginning to move again. Thank goodness for that. You spoke about the dead weight, and that is what Stallion is contending with right now. Yes, how is he gonna even how's he gonna touch a turnbuckle if he can't even get back into the ring? But it's developing into a bit of a tug of war, it seems. Johnson is in the ring. Or sorry, Stallion is in the ring. And Johnson still reeling from that incredible tumble he took to the chairs. This, these two men are duking it out like it's like it's an old time boxing match here. These two men are a pair of just rabbit dogs, wolves, just at a piece of meat that they have been starving for for days. They are going at each other. The stallion has touched the second turnbuckle here, but Johnson spears the life right out of the black stallion. This is a cutthroat match. The stallion is not going to get to that third turnbuckle as Johnson just. Forgive my language, but speared the hell out of it. This is this match is incredible. I I am at a loss for words. The brutality we are watching. These men are willing to do anything they need to. A club to the back again takes down no Stallion. Limits. Indeed, these men are putting themselves through absolute physical torture for this industry, for this sport. In this matchup, anarchy truly rules. You must. You must be willing to go that extra mile. The Stallion is over the second rope now, trying to take a breather. No but fear. But that's not a good idea. No fear indeed. Look at Johnson there. Johnson taking it to the extreme on Stallion. Look at him. He's on those ropes and just pulling back on the larynx, on the throat. I've seen car wrecks that look better than this, quite frankly. The, the kind of whiplash that could be incurred from your neck being wrenched back like that. He's got to be in severe pain, folks. The dead look in his eyes. And, and the Johnson. whiplash right there. What else is he going to do? And Johnson, I'm not sure if he knows where he is. He's trying to pinfall here. After that spill we saw on the outside into those chairs, Johnson may have a concussion. He may not even know fully where he is. He may be working on instinct. Pure instinct alone is what allows him to perform some of these maneuvers that he's so well versed at. He's trying again for a pinfall. Bit of look at confusion and in Donnie, his eyes. I think you're right. He might... He might not be all there. The, the lights are on, but nobody's home, as is the case with Johnson, at least momentarily. But that might make him even more dangerous, like a wounded animal. Johnson may go even yes. deeper and darker into that spot in his mind. With, I don't want to think about it, but he may go there. And he's almost allowing the Black Stallion now to get to that turnbuckle. Oh, that's a rake to the back. Do you see that rake to the back? Oh. 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 Malicious Johnson. intent. We thought originally that Johnson was very hurt by those uh, the, his legs on those chairs, but this that is nothing short of breathtaking. I said it before. Just takes him down, even though this is a strap match. The ring skills on display by Johnson. Yes, and these two men are almost back to square one here as far as a wrestling contest goes. Some pure wrestling technique being applied by Johnson, and no use of the strap at this moment. Not at all, but Johnson. Johnson is a systematic individual, and he will tear you apart limb from limb in whatever order he desires, in whichever order he thinks is going to make for the best outcome in, his, in this match. And there you see it. He's working on the left arm and the left hand of the Black Stallion. He's got that look in his eyes again. Indeed, that faraway look from before has now been replaced with a look of intent and determination. And he, I'll correct myself, he knows exactly where, it is, where he is. Oh. It's ruthless aggression that he knows he has to put forth in order to take the stallion out and win this matchup. I cannot believe the sound of that strap as it comes in contact with the back, the back of the black stallion. This match will no doubt have heavy implications into the primetime wrestling championship and who is going to become the next number one contender for it. Well, any man, Donnie, who, who survives a match like this deserves a title shot, in my opinion. Precisely, precisely, Mark. You survive this my kind of matchup. There's the one. second. No, that's the I'm second. I'm sorry. He did touch the first as we were talking about the title picture. I was looking at Stallion a little bit. He is writhing in pain on that mat. He may be hurt. And the Stallion is trying everything within his power, using his legs now to try to 
keep Johnson from getting any further. Now Stallion was, at, was acting as the anchor in the matchup, preventing Johnson from reaching all four corners, and he gets a knee to the throat for his troubles. And again, Rob Page can do nothing except count those four turnbuckles. Nothing whatsoever. Now I think everybody's questioning the decision to sanction this matchup. This has become a violent altercation that we did not expect would be this serious, quite frankly. The scoop slam by Johnson is, is, doing, is doing very negative damage to the back of the Black Stallion. You can see there he's wrenching in pain. Absolutely, he likely at least, if not lacerations, has welts from those strap attacks by Johnson, just whipping him with that strap across the back. Johnson is going to climb up to the, the second mat. rope. He's sitting down on top of that turnbuckle. I don't think he's going to go for a high-risk maneuver here. I think he's going to try to whip the back yet again. There's the lacerations you're talking. Oh no, look at this here, Donnie. The compounding pain. The Black Stallion is gonna have none of it. He's gonna, he just yanked Johnson right off that top rope. And the pain, he didn't even feel that, that third leather strap lashing from Johnson, did he? The adrenaline must be pumping through the veins. And there you go, John, that's what it feels like to be whipped with leather. How do you like it? How do you like the way it feels? You know what, I think that Johnson may like it just a little bit as it lights a fire. <laughs> Indeed so, but a, a flying shoulder block takes down Johnson. And Johnson is at the one at the end of the stick here. I don't like this one, like the this one bit. He's sizing him up as the Black Stallion. Building momentum for this finisher that is... Goes for the bicycle kick, but Johnson ducks. And a splash into the corner, followed by a shoulder to the midsection. And just like that, Johnson is back in control. Oh, an elbow to the face. Look at look at the look, the glazed look in the eye of the stallion. He may be the one wondering exactly where he is right now. Sets him up for something. He may be trying for a superplex. I'm not sure. It looks like I'm pretty sure that stallion was heavily invested in that bicycle kick, that same maneuver that won him the primetime wrestling heavyweight championship in the past. These two men Super jockeying for time. position, duking it out. He shoves Johnson off, just like that. Johnson's on the mat. The Stallion, he might be the one going for the high-risk maneuver now. He's getting energy from these fans who love him dearly. Is the Black Stallion. He has, Johnson is up. Going for that act. Johnson sees it, telegraphs he, yes, it. Yes, he took his time too much with that ax handle. He was gonna go for Johnson, caught him, telegraphed him as you said. And he is now, and he's going for, for fists and clubs and everything else he he's can pull out. He's going for that superplex he was going for originally. Can he lay it? We'll see, maybe not. He might go for a tornado DDT. The compounding assault on the Black Stallion's back. Those, those whippings, and now again. And you could hear back. the impact of both men hitting the mat. Superplex now on his back. Stallion's back. He is writhing in pain right now. And I got to tell you, that might have taken out just as much out of Johnson. You'll see it here again. These two men. The airtime by these two. Incredible. The impact. You could see the whole ring shake. And I can tell you, from first-hand knowledge, you could feel the whole, the whole room shake. The look on Stallion's face told the tale. The referee now, he cannot count to a, to a 10 or 20 count for that matter here. He's oh. only there to make sure that one of these men touches the turnbuckles in succession. That's the only reason there's any law and order here whatsoever. Otherwise, martial law is reigning supreme tonight in our main event of primetime wrestling. Stallion's got a turnbuckle. Donnie, he might do it here. He's got a second. But look, Johnson at the other end of the, the ring. He's got two as well. He's so got now, two also. This, I've, I've never heard of a draw in a strap match before. But it, I mean, I guess it is possible. We do have instant replay here in primetime wrestling. It is mathematically possible. It's going to be an old-fashioned tug of war to see who can get to the fourth turnbuckle. Is it going to be Johnson? Is it going to be Stallion? Come on, Johnson. You are just inches away. Come on, Stallion. You're just inches away. Johnson has him up. Johnson has him up. What's he going to do? Down. Lays him out. This is the end. 
This is the end indeed. This turkey known as the Black Stallion is stuffed. Johnson, get up and assume. Stick. Assume it. Stick. Your spot atop PTW is one of the number one. There you go, Johnson with the first one. The, the count was broken after that maneuver. That was the downside to that maneuver. Johnson gonna go for the second. He did it. I think the Stallion's just about done here. It just be, it might be academic at this point. Three, this is There's we're the done. third. It's over. It's pretty much gonna be but over. Stallion's getting to his feet. He's got a little bit, but no, come on, Johnson's it? got. Look how close he is, Johnson. You are inches away. Just pull him in. Come on. The Stallion has him up. Down. Emerald Fusion out of nowhere. An incredible move that you so rarely see, Donnie. I didn't even. I could. I didn't. Emerald Fusion, wow. I have not seen that since my days of Japan and covering it. There's the Stallion with the first turnbuckle. The Stallion following that Emerald Fusion. Johnson's got to be out. That's Is that number three, Donnie? This is it. Here the Stallion's going to win it. No, this is number three coming up right here. Oh, now three we're there. Is Johnson. Johnson goes flying. He's to the outside. This is not good, though. He's in that corner pulling on it. Did that reset the count? No, it does not. Oh, and Johnson goes careening right into the ring post. Stallion, touch if the last enough one. Of that's no. Do it, Stallion. Yes. And says the Black Stallion has won this strap match after Johnson sent flying into the ring post. The greatest night of in injustice in the in the history of professional wrestling happened right here tonight. What first Billy Blaze and all the preparation by John Johnson. Johnson is done for in this matchup, but somehow the politicking. Oh, come on. We both know that Rob Page is good friends with Stallion. That is neither here nor there. The Black Stallion has defeated John Johnson completely fair and square in this strap match. You know it just as well as I do. Amazing action here tonight. And how both of these men are still breathing at the end of this match is beyond me. Donnie, you look absolutely livid as you sit next to me. I am... I am at a loss for words knowing that tonight my good friends are gonna are gonna take their travels out of here from, from the Knights of Columbus as, as different men and I don't want to say not as better men or less men, but these men experience things that they shouldn't. Look at how distraught he is after the preparation and after all the effort it was stolen from him, John Johnson. Ever the misfit because these fans do not accept his greatness, but they love the stallion. After over 20 minutes. And hate him, why I do not know. Donnie, after 20 minutes of an incredible matchup, this one is over, and the Black Stallion has won in one of the most incredible bouts I've ever seen here at the Knights of Columbus Hall. Quickly, let's remind fans, you can visit ptwrestling.com for tickets to any of our live events. This has been, I, I'm at a loss for words, but in a much better way than you are, Donnie. I am, I am mourning, these, I don't know. These I, fans couldn't be more delighted that the arms of the Black Stallion are being raised here tonight. I'm glad to see that Billy Blaze is okay and he was able to make a statement after the injustice. I hope to speak with John Johnson after this matchup. He seems to be all right, but I hope mentally he's also doing all right. Incredible matchup. Both men pulled out all the stops. Credit to both of them. Thank Great action tonight. Thank you again for being with us. This is primetime wrestling. This is the most exciting wrestling action, the domain for professional wrestling. Absolutely. Here in Minnesota, it is number one. Please, come join us next time, and thanks for being with us here. Primetime wrestling.